Hello and welcome to an episode of Advanced GIS. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at GIS workflows and how to use Python programming and model builder to create reproducible workflows in ArcGIS Pro. Come up here to model builder and click save. So now I have my SP watershed. If I come in here to catalog, come over here to my toolbox, I have my SP watershed. Okay, well, let's create a new map. This new map, what I'm going to do is come over and grab my layers. So Napa DEM. All right. So this is my new map. And what I want to do is run my tool. So I come over here to my toolbox and I find there's my SP watershed. If I double click, uh, we see that there are no parameters. All right. So how do we assign parameters? come over here to W shed. So what do we want our tool to do? If we take a look at the model builder workflow, what are we doing? We're taking an input DEM layer an input coordinate layer, and then we run them through and the output watershed raster layer is created. We also have to assign a snap pore point distance. So what are the parameters that you would want to be able to adjust in your model? Well, you're gonna wanna be able to change your input layer. So we come over here and we right click it. We come down to parameter and it gets the little P. Then our input coordinates, we right click and we come over here to parameter and it gets a little P. Come over here to project. I can right click here and say, create a variable from parameter. And maybe I wanna be able to set the output coordinate system of project. And here, I'll turn that into a parameter. That way I can assign my outlet geo when I run my tool so that the output coordinate system will be the same as my input layer. And then snap pour points, we come over here and right click, we say create a variable from parameter and the snap distance. And then over here, I'm gonna right click and turn it into a parameter. So then here I can right click, maybe I don't want the set snap distance anymore and delete that. So now I have Oops, I also want this to be a parameter. Okay, so whenever I run my tool, if I click save, I should be able to assign an input layer for my DEM, an input layer for my XY point, an output coordinate system for the XY point, a snap distance for snapper point, and the output layer name from the tool. So I click save, I come back over to my map, I come over to my advanced GIS toolbox, find my SPW shed, double click. And just like a GIS tool, you can see that the default input layers are here. So if I click that, that's my Napa DEM layer. If I remove it, Notice that the name Napa.dem, Outlet, GOTXT, and Napa W Shed are not really useful names. So I think what I want to do is come back over to my model. And instead of calling this Napa DEM, I'm going to rename it. And I'm going to call this my input DEM raster layer. So now I can get rid of this label. Down here, because it's a parameter, I can right click and come over here to rename. This is my input outlet coordinates 
text file. Come over here and delete that. Output coordinate system, snap distance, and out here, I can right click this, come down to rename, and this is now my outlet. Nope, this is my watershed raster layer. Over here, delete. Maybe I do want to call it output. Output watershed raster layer. Come back up here to save. Come back over here to my map. Come back over here to catalog and open up my tool again. Now we see things are looking a little bit more like what we would expect from the Esri ArcGIS toolboxes. And we see that we can pick our input DEM raster layer now. We can come over here to input coordinate text file. We can come over here to the output coordinate system. And we can come down here and name our output watershed. And maybe I want to call this Napa W shed two so that it doesn't overwrite the other one. And here I can even come in and change my snap distance. How convenient. SPW shed might not be the most useful name. So how do we change the name? Come back to geoprocessing. We see that the names of tools all have these very nice, cool looking names. So then we come back over to this and we come over to our properties and change the label to our special works watershed tool and click OK. Click save, come back over to my map, come back over to catalog and we see my special works watershed tool shows up and now we have our tool okay now the only thing to do is run it and we can run it just like any other geoprocessing tool you can run it as a geoprocessing tool here and you can also come over here and come up to run the tool straight from the model builder window pane. Let's create a new file geo database. And this will be my watershed geo database. Okay. My map will bring in Napa DEM. And then I'll come down here to data export raster. And I'm going to put this into my W shed Napa DEM. All right. Okay, exported my raster. So now I don't have this in some weird place. And refresh. There's my DEM. And what if I go ahead and bring in the tabular data? Can't paste it in, so we go over to our geoprocessing and we do table to table. Put this in my
watershed geodatabase. And this is my outlet geo txt. All right. So if we prepare our input layers, watershed GDB, then I should be able to come over here to my special works project tool. Now these are all defined using the file geo database in the advanced GIS. So I think what we have to do is change the outputs so that they are now in watershed geo database. So there's the map of film. Napa FDR. Napa FAC. Here, I don't want it to be the text file anymore. That's, I guess that's fine for the time being. Output needs to be in my watershed, call it Outlet Geo. Project, Output, Outlet NAD. Snapper point output is going to be snapper. And then watershed is going to be Napa W shed. All right. So we've changed the default geo database. All right, so we're gonna drag Napa Dem in here. Come over here and delete that. Replace this. Make it a parameter. input DEM raster layer. Come over here to my outlet geo txt. My input outlet coordinate table. And we may get a parameter. Up here to properties and parameters. All right, now that we've created parameters, we can have, whether or not they are required or optional, the data types that they are there for, we have no categories that we can choose from and there are no filters that we can choose from, but it has a default value. No thing we can do about any of these other things. Save. Okay, so we now have these defined. We should be able to check out our file geo database. 
just has those two tables in it. Come up here and validate our model. Seems to be fine. Let's try to run it. What you can see is that the red boxes are the ones that are being completed. Ridiculously large and then my way. And we should over here have all of the intermediate layers that were created. All right, so we've tested all the layers. We come back over here to the map and I can then add my Napa FDR. Sure. That looks right. I can add my Napa FAC. Symbology on these are always a little bit tough. Come over here to symbology, change it from percent clip to standard deviation. That looks right. And then we look at our outlet geo. Okay, there it is. And let's take a look at our snap pour point. And we see that it is woefully not close enough to where we want it to be. So let's come back over to our model. Our snapping distance is set to 20. If we look at the map, 20 is probably... Oof, if that's 20 away, that would be 40, 60, 80, 100. 100 or 120 is probably a good next guess. So I'm gonna add 100 to that. And then what we can do, we can come up here to save and we can click run. Notice that these layers have already been created. This is the only thing that changed. So this and this are the only things that are rerun. Come back over to model. We check our snapper point. It has been removed from the map. Drag and drop. And there we have it. Lovely. So that means that if the snapper point is working, then we should very likely have a Napa watershed. And there it is. Okay, so there it is, model builder. You can run it from here. And then from map, if you wanted to just keep running it and testing it out, you simply come over here to your toolbox. And from here, you can change, oh, wow, look how, how miserably ordered this is. Uh, Back over here, properties, parameters, output coordinate system. Let's see, input should be our first one. Sorry, input DEM, your input outlet, then your output coordinate system, your snap distance and your output. Okay, save, map, catalog, and then here we have it. Special works watershed tool. Nap a DEM, and now I can change this value. Maybe I don't want it to be 120, I want it to be one, 150. And I can rerun the tool from here. Very conveniently, sit back, relax, 
and let the new Napa watershed get delineated for me. And there's the new one. You can see that it's kind of plopped a little piece of the tip off of there. Then come up here and hit save. And you've created a GIS tool. You've created it built based on a workflow. And we've set up the parameters, the inputs, the outputs. And now it's a reusable tool for your benefit. So next, what we're going to see is if we come up here to the export, we'll see that we can export both to a graphic and export to a Python file. And you can see that this geoprocessing tool is actually just a series of Python commands. All right, I'll let you play around with the grouping and ungrouping layouts, auto layouts versus fit to windows, all of those fun tools. Until next time, this is Professor Davis. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time.